Pain. <clears throat> Horror. Decay. <clears throat> the Green Reaper, death. <sighs> but above all, Fear. Fear characterizes human life like anything else. Fear of everything. That's what we are. In our plight, our predicament is so bad that truly what applied three centuries ago still applies. But still, a life is short and solitary and brutish. <coughs> it's bad. And actually, it is so bad that at least some of us didn't find a better way of raising themselves from hell than giving themselves hell, trying to forget our plight, trying to forget who we are. and who we are not. I would say that human life is a failed experiment. Badly failed. I'd like to file a complaint on behalf of all of you. Okay. What can we do? Can we straighten things up? Can we change our fate? Can we change the state of affairs we're bogged down in? Yeah, we can. Today, it will be a creative morning, all right. And I'm here to give you a vision, 
an agenda. I'm here to give you a new world, a brave new world. If you will be part of it, if you will have the guts and the courage to see this through. So let's start with this brand new world, a vision for the 21st century and beyond. First order of business is evil. What truly characterizes our life is how evil we are. And the evil we bring about in this world. And there can be no doubt about it. And there is no doubt about it. Fifty years ago, a great Spanish neuroscientist, Jose Delgado, who emigrated to America, thought otherwise. He considered that we, we human beings are actually in the clutches of our passions, in the clutches of something that is constantly in turmoil inside and that we can't control emotions, passions, those are the true killers in many instances. So he saw a big disconnect between the way we cannot control our passions our emotions and the technological progress that mankind has gone through over the past three centuries. And he was so worried about our future prospects that in the end he settled for a solution. Now, he believed that the only way to bring mankind under control, your passions, your evil, was to bring you all under control. By harnessing, by tapping into the power of what was emerging at the time, brain stimulation or as we call it nowadays, brain modulation. In order to prove the point, uh, in the 60s, he ran this experiment. He implanted a steam receiver, a kind of electro, inside the brain of a raging bull. Raging, rage, rage, death. Of a raging bull. And uh, himself was not Torero, a scientist. So he just flapped. The red thing, the always flap, just to spur bulls on to attack. And uh, the bull attacked. And a few meters away from him, just short of running the horns straight into him, he just did this, click. And the bull stopped dead. And it strikes. Bam! The proof principle was to prove that a brain could be controlled that a raging passion, a killing passion, could be controlled. And so he did. If you look at society at large, you will see that we are not so evil. But a minority of us are. 
And this minority are the psychopath. About 10% of all mankind is made up of psychopaths. Uh, I call them criminal minds. But you don't have to consider to, to view these people as only those who go out and commit murder or killings of any sort. Psychopaths are in places of power. Your politicos, your politicians, the ones you send to control your lives. Many of these people are psychopaths. The good news is that today we have the means to ascertain who among you is a psychopath. By tapping into advanced neuroimaging, such as positron emission tomography and functional magnetic resonance, we can see that the brains of psychopath, not just murderers, also politicos. I didn't bring the slide. Uh, as something that doesn't really pan out. There are differences. We can really identify these guys. So, a vision for the 21st century is that we must absolutely keep evil in check for the reason that will be made clear to you in short order. And in order to do this, in this century, you will see the deployment of brain technology that you will witness in a few years from now. And that will keep these people in control. No longer psychopaths will be allowed to run your lives, to wreak havoc with your lives, to bring suffering to your lives. Because society, you, will force these people to be identified and controlled. But why is it so important to control these people? Ah, this is the question. Well, perhaps to save a few million children somewhere around the world? Yeah, it's a good reason, but there's much more. And so, let's delve into it. As I speak, we are aging. Every second that passes, the clock, the biological clock in your bodies is ticking. It's a bomb. And the finish line is a grave. Well, not a nice view for a creative morning, but this is what it happens. I welcome you to the brave new world. I welcome you to the 21st century, a century where everything will change and will change your life <coughs> forever. In this century, you will have two options. Much evil comes from the fact from the realization that you are going to die. And since you're going to die, perhaps some of you might think, I don't care. I don't care about anything. I'm going to die after all. Who cares? But in this century, the challenge is on to make you immortal, to extend your lives. For decades now, people have tried to extend your lives by manipulating your biochemistry, what makes your body body stick. But uh, I would say that uh, that effort really didn't pay off handsomely. In this century, you have two options. To stop, to cease being human. Homo sapiens, bye-bye. And welcome the new species that is rising on this planet. As we speak, laboratories around the world are pushing this agenda forward. In 10 years, the first human brain will be 
transplanted onto a cybernetic entity. A new species will be born. No more problems with your heart. No more problems with your arthritis. No more problems with fractures. No problem whatsoever. A new species, a new entity, but that will no longer be human. This is no longer science fiction. This is science in the making. Sponsored and uh, well sponsored with billions by interested parties around the world. I would like to conserve our species for at least a few more centuries. And to do that, uh, we can do that. And how can we do that? By pushing our vision forward, by pushing science forward to its very limits, and then going beyond those limits. And in order to do this, we can tap into the true, real possibility of making your bodies live longer. How do we do that? First of all, we must ensure that the technology is in for us to be able to take your heads and to move those heads onto new bodies, to give you new bodies. I don't like my body, I want a new body. Yeah, we can do that. Two years from now, the first head body transplant will take place on this planet. And that's cool, but, you know, the problem is, and then, good question. This is the answer. And the answer actually is 60 years old. If you wash an aging tissue, in the blood of a younger organism, the aging tissues will start rejuvenating. Ah, great discovery. Probably a Nobel Prize is there. So all organs, including the brain, and especially the brain, rejuvenate. You start winding your clock backwards. A miracle is happening. This phenomenon has a name, heterochronic parabiosis. And for those of you who don't speak Greek, it's simple as rewinding the clock. Simple as that. So imagine your body being able to rejuvenate. But of course, there is a limit to that. You can't have mega stores of blood, of young blood for all of you. No. But in this century, something will happen. In this century, in the next two decades, cloning will be perfected. Cloning will allow you all to get a new body, a new you. You'll go to the clinic, not a beauty clinic, but a, a cloning clinic, and they will just uh, harvest a few cells, and in a matter of one year, inside these incubators, which have been the works for now probably something like 20 years, they will grow a new you from 0 to 20 in one year. This century, in this century, you will see that. So, at this point, what happens is 
that will move your head with your memories onto your new body, no immune rejection because that's your body, and another 50 years of life. Ah, bravo, good, great. Imagine now 7 billion people being cloned and extending their lives. Imagine a small planet not being able to accommodate all those people. This technology will force us to do what we have to do. Uh, Tsiolkovsky, the father of astronautics, once said that everybody has been in a cradle, but no one stays in a cradle forever. So, being able to extend our lives will allow future astronauts, perhaps your children, or perhaps some of you, who knows, to be able to start exploring the deep space and give new hope to mankind in a dying planet that we are killing. I would say, cool. But I can assure you that this is not the coolest part of it all. No, there's much more. This is the hors d'oeuvre. This is the entree. No, I want to give you more. More than you bargain for. So I said that what characterizes human life is the fear of death. It is the fear of living in a world we don't understand, we don't know where we come from, we don't know who we are, and we can go to Papa and Mama and ask them, what the fuck have you done to me? Why am I here? I don't know. So um, we invented religions in order to assuage our fears, in order to give us meaning, in order to give us scope. Uh, I wouldn't say that that really panned out, uh, given all the wars that really came out of religions. So, today I'm giving you more. Today I'm reinstating you to where you belong. According to materialist and reductionist science, which is rampant in our Western culture, you are nothing. Uh, you are a brain that is a jelly blob made of cells. And these cells made of fats and proteins are what make you tick. So you are actually fat and proteins. Brrr. I would say that this is a harsh reality, but this according to materialists. And the materialists will tell you that when the brain goes awry, something, you know, malfunctioning, well, you lose your memories, you lose your ego, and you start decaying and dying. Poof, nothing. I have good news. This is wrong. <sighs> In the face of ugly facts, beautiful theories collapse, crash. And uh, the materialist view of life is a nice theory that badly crashes when confronted with facts, with scientific evidence. What happens when you have an Alzheimer patient who has no recollections, recollections whatsoever, who doesn't know you from Adam, who is lost, brain consumed in one hell of a disease? 
vegetative, dead. All of a sudden, a few days before dying, wakes up, perfectly recognizes everybody around, talks to you, and then dies. For materialist science, this is impossible. Unfortunately, I do not believe in the word impossible. And we know for a fact, we know for a fact, that this is real life. There are cases that really wake up recognize you and go on to die then. How is it possible? The brain was destroyed, it was a desert. All those fat and proteins had been destroyed by the disease process. How could it happen? Well, facts are facts. However ugly they are, so we can say that the material science has a real problem explaining this evidence. But it gets worse for the materialists. In 2014, the AWARE study reported that during cardiac arrest, cardiac arrest, In patients who later resuscitated, they could confirm that consciousness survived without a working brain. Ah, ah, that is a problem for the other side. The brain was not working, but consciousness was there. So. This is the iconic report from the patients. Now, I'm sure that some materialists are here to spread misinformation, but I'm stronger than you. As you can see, during cardiac arrest, there is not a hint not a hint of brain activity, and despite all this, despite all of this, what these people experience is more real than life itself. You are living in a dream. They live the real life. And it's there, this is science, technology that proves this point. Um, life was the dream. We have the first evidence, finally, that near-death experiences are not the product of a dying brain. They are the proof that what had, we have been told is wrong. Sorry for the materialists. You are wrong. So, the conclusion, we can get it, is simple. Consciousness is at the basis of reality. And all the rest, all the balance, follows from it. This is the greatest scientific revolution ever. And if you ask me what we're talking about, I can only give you a hint of this. Like two magnets, a magnetic field, you can see that. But with iron filings, you can really identify that something is going on. And a near-death experience is just like that. When you die, you don't die. Consciousness survives. But we want clinching evidence. I believe that evidence is more than enough. But I'm going to give you clinching evidence for this and trigger the greatest revolution ever in human history. For one creative morning, during the transference of a head onto a body, the head will be cooled to 15 degrees Celsius and bloodless, not a single drop of blood. That brain 
will be as dead as it gets. When the patient will be revived and will tell us about his near-death experience, it will be a death experience. And it will prove without a hint of doubt the consciousness survives death. This is Project Limes from Latin, limit, boundary. We will break the boundary of ignorance. And we will start a new world. Let me recap for you. You are going to die. You are going to age. You are going to suffer. That's your life. I'm sorry. But today, I'm telling you that this is going to change. After three million years of evolution, or ten, as some would say, for the first time in human history, much to your amazement, this is going to change. Those who came before you, your forerunners, well, they went through wars probably every year. The greatest wars in the 20th century. Horror between, sorry, beyond imagination. And this still happens. You are only lucky. You are living in Turin or in the West. But I don't know how long it's going to last. But what I can tell you is it doesn't matter anymore. When in two years from now the first head transplant will take place, we will start the revolution. When the first brain will be moved onto a cybernetic unit, a new species will arise. And you will be there to see that. So the revolution has begun. The revolution begins now. It will come as a shock to you because you are alive at the time when this happens. But probably you will witness, you will be the protagonist of this revolution. So today, here, you are witnessing your future. Thank you.